It was early morning before the sun had risen when I was startled by a faint gunshot. My husband was still asleep with a look of distant dreams until I woke him. He was startled and gave me a disapproving look at my decision until we heard the sounds of wood and glass breaking. I had never seen fear and despair on a man's face as I did that morning. My husband rushed to his clothes, neatly laid on the chair from the night before. He quickly demanded I gather our seven children, already awake and frightened, and head to the cellar. As I climbed out of bed, we both froze in time, as if the world was moving around us and we didn't have the power to move a muscle. Two Indians knocked down our doors and rushed towards the children. My very eyes were filled with unforeseen images <coughs> that are hard to recount. I saw as a savage with a devil's tool kill two of my children in a matter of seconds. As I gasped, I tasted the sweat that flew off the savage as he prepared to do the same to my youngest. I rest, the rest I failed to remember. As I awoke from my trance, I realized I was being dragged in the frigid snow with my bedclothes clinging to my weak and injured body. I looked around and saw bodies on the ground that belonged to faces I once knew, but no longer recognized. I smelled the burning flesh of the hogs, or what I thought were hogs, Now I can only imagine it was the smell of my loving friends. I searched the sky for signs of the Lord to guide me to a better place, but all I saw were the dark clouds blocking the rising sun, my light. My thoughts were then interrupted by the sound of children crying. It quickly reminded me of the images I chose never to see again. I looked behind me in hopes to see my husband, but saw nothing except savages running in the snow, causing clouds of white and a sea of red. We approached a neighbor's home that my thoughts do not let me remember who it belonged to. As we entered, a young man, French I presume, um, as he was treated with care, was brought in. He was severely injured, wounded, and asked for some water. As a form of instinct, I quickly grabbed a cup from the cupboard, a small English teacup with beautiful pink flowers and a gold rim, and filled it with water from the bucket nearby. As I approached the man, one of my fellow neighbors frowned at me and whispered, how could you do that for your enemy? I responded as, as if the Lord had entered my body. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him water to drink. I stepped back and saw as the other captives looked at me with disgust. The French and the savages did something unexpected to us all. They left, leaving me behind alone. I have yet to understand the abandonment and wish they had allowed me to join my children and leave this land of evil.